let's talk about the ruler postulate, the protractor postulate, and betweenness definitions and theorems. Postulate number three is the ruler postulate. Now, let me just reiterate, if I haven't already, that the postulate numbering and for some and to some degree the theorem numbering is up to the author of the book that's uh, uh, up to the author of any given geometry book. So in our book, uh, postulate three is the ruler postulate. In Euclid's original book, maybe not. Okay, let's talk about the ruler postulate. The points on a line can be numbered so that positive number differences measure distances. And by that, we mean, well, let's see, in this little diagram right here, this row right here is talking about point names. So we have point A, B, and C. You can give a point any name you want. What is a point? A point is a location uh, in space. So we just give it a name. These numbers down below are what we call locations or coordinates. So we can say point A with a capital letter is at a location A, point B is at location B, and point C is at location C. So the point is the uppercase letter and the locations are the lowercase letter. Now I've given, offered two different sets of coordinates for this just to show you that positive number differences measure distance. So if point A is at the three inch mark and point B is at the five inch mark, then the distance between them is not three take away five, it's five take away three. So we subtract the larger from the smaller in order to get the distance. And then the distance between point B and point C is from five to 10 inches, which would be five inches difference. Now, we don't necessarily have to lay things out from uh, left to right or big to small. We can, or small to large, we can lay them out from large to small as in the third row. And so we have nine centimeters, six centimeters, and one centimeter. And the distance between point A and B in this case would be nine take away six, which is three. And the distance between point B and C is six take away one, which is five. So postulate three is a ruler postulate, and it basically is saying you can apply any ruler you want to a distance. Pick an appropriate ruler. If your distances are large, like the size of a field, then the ruler might be in meters or yards. If it's very large, it might be in miles. If it's in astronomical distances, then you might choose astronomical units or light years but you'll find distance by subtracting a larger coordinate from a smaller coordinate. Before we apply this to circles, um, let's talk a little bit about some degree terminology. A degree is 1 360th of a circle, and from a center of a circle you can have rays emanating in all directions. There can be an, an infinite number of them, or there can be as many of them as you need to do your work, such as defining an angle. A half rotation of rays is, again, a center of a circle, but we are only looking at the rays emanating on one side of the circle or the other side of the circle. So here's a picture of a full rotation of rays, and I don't know if you can see up close maybe, but uh, the distance between these rays looks to be about 10 degrees. Here's a real typical half rotation of rays, and yes indeed, it looks like a protractor. In fact, it looks like the protractor we're using. And again, the rays are about 10 degrees apart here. Why are there 360 degrees in the circle? Well. We know that 360 degrees in a circle has been used for 4,000 years, more, more than 4,000 years. Um, probably originated somewhere in the mid to far east, probably the Babylonians. And we think that because their number system is based on 60, which is 360 is easily divisible by 60. Now, why choose 360 when there are indeed 365 days in the year? And it's because 360 is a much nicer number than 365. 
365 isn't even divisible by 2 and certainly not by 3. It's only divisible by 5 and I think by 73, which is kind of a odd prime. But 360 is divisible by 2, by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, not by 7, but by 8, by 9, by 10, not by 11, but by 12, not by 13, a bunch of numbers, 20, 24, um, it's just divisible by a lot of things. And so it's easy to divide a circle up into those um, uh, chunks. Um, a little bit more, coordinates. So when you align your protractor to the center and start counting degrees from some ray, in other words, make one ray uh, the zero point, the point where you're gonna start counting from, and then you can count either clockwise or count counterclockwise. And as you mark off rays and na name them by their degree measure, each one of those rays marks a coordinate or has a coordinate that can be assigned to it. The measure of an angle, therefore, is the positive difference, that means the larger minus the smaller, between the coordinates of the rays that are the sides of the angle. So protractor, excuse me, postulate four is the protractor postulate. And because protractor typically carries a half rotation, it's a half circle, then the rays in a half rotation can be numbered from zero to 180 so that positive number differences measure angles. Um, now in the ruler pro postulate, we said you can put any ruler you want. You can use metric, you can use English, you can use astronomical units. Um, but in the protractor postulate, we're talking about 360 degrees in a circle, so 180 degrees in a half circle. Uh, here's some other degree terminology. An angle is acute if and only if it is less than 90 degrees. An angle is right if it is exactly 90 degrees. Uh, an angle is obtuse if it is between 90 and 180. It can't be 90 and it can't be 180. So it's got to be more than 90 and less than 180. And an angle is straight if and only if it is 180 degrees. And notice that if and only if implies two conditional statements. So for example, in that first one, um, we can name the conditional statements. If an angle is acute, then it is less than 90 degrees. And if an angle is less than 90 degrees, then it is acute. So each one of those I IFFs, or if and only if, implies two conditional statements. Here's some betweenness notation. When we write a hyphen b hyphen c and the uppercase letters again name places, um, then we read that b is between a and c. We don't read it, read it a, b, c. We read it b is between a and c. Now when you're talking about betweenness, then points do not have to be in alphabetical order or in sequential order. Uh, for instance, G hyphen V hyphen Q, which you wouldn't read that way, you'd read V is between G and Q, and it means that point V is between G and Q. All right, between us a point, a definition. A point is between two other points on the same line if and only if its coordinate is between their coordinates. So the uppercase le letters are the names of of the points, um, sort of like saying Ferndale, A is Ferndale, and this place is uh, Bellingham and so forth. Um, so, but naming a place as Ferndale doesn't tell us where Ferndale is. Um, but if, but the point A would give its like geographical location or geo, geo, what do you call it? Geo, uh, the, the coordinates we use to describe latitude and longitude. So coordinate A and B and C would, uh, the, and using the lowercase, would correspond to numbers that then you could subtract to find distance. So if, a, if B is between A and C, then it's implied that they're collinear and that uh, coordinate A is less than coordinate B is less than coordinate C, or the other way around, A is greater than B is greater than C. 
So again, what two conditional statements does that if and only if imply? Well, let's start with the first one. If a point is between two other points on the same line, then its coordinate is between their coordinates. And in reverse, if on a line uh, there are three coordinates and one of them one of them is between the other two, then that point is between the other two points on that line. Theorem number one, between us a points theorem. Now, don't get confused between the theorems and the definitions. Uh, in theorem number one, between us a points, we are given that three point, we have three points on a line and that B is between A and C. So if you have betweenness, that's what this theorem is saying, then you can add up the parts of the line to make the larger line. So the, the distance from AB added to the distance from BC should equal the distance from A to C. The two smaller distances should add up to the larger distance. Here's the proof for betweenness of points. Okay, and we're gonna, because we actually have two cases and we need to prove it both ways, uh, we're gonna start with the A is less than B is less than C possibility. So we have given to us that A is, um, a, that we have B is between A and C. That's what we were given. Now, the definition of betweenness says that if you have betweenness, then A should be less than B should be less than C. So what gives us the right to say that A is less than B is less than C? And the answer is the definition of betweenness. Okay, now, we, in the next statement, we say AB, AB implies a distance, equals B minus A, and BC is equal to C minus B. Well, remember the ruler postulate, which says if you have a distance, then their differences of the coordinates is equal to that distance. So the distance AB is equal to B minus A, because in this case, B is greater than A, and BC is equal to C minus B because C is uh, less than, C is greater than B. So then how do we get from step three to step four? Well, notice on one side we had, let's try and get this line in the right place. We had AB equals B minus A. And then we had another equation, BC equals C minus B. Well, if I show those two equations added together, then I will have AB plus BC on one side and those two little differences added together on the other side. Now, simplifying that last thing that I underlined, you notice that you have a positive B and a negative B. And then we have negative A and positive C. So uh, the B's cancel each other out. And I have then a positive C and a negative A as my final simplification. So what did we do? We added the same thing to both sides. And then we made a substitution. Um, uh, where did we do that? Oh, because we added BC to both sides, but instead of showing as, as BC on the left hand, on the right hand side, we put down what BC was equal to, and that was C minus B. So we added BC to one side, we added C minus B to the other side, and then we simplified a little bit to get C minus A. Um, now, if, how do we get from step four to step five? Well, remember AB plus BC is adding up parts on this ruler. And if you add up the parts, you better come up with a whole. So AB plus BC is equal to AC. And then we just copied that we just brought this part down. So that's the ruler postulate. And uh, the, right, the, the thing that gives us the right to say that is the ruler postulate. And what we have done is gone through a whole bunch of uh, simplifications here. We started off with this piece right here, AB plus BC, and we ended up with AC. And so then we've summarized that in this step right down here. 
Betweenness of rays works very similarly. A ray is between two others in the same half rotation if and only if its coordinates is between their coordinates. Now, that phrase same half rotation means that all the rays we're talking about emanate from the same place, uh, letter O in this particular uh, diagram. So that if OB is between OA and OC, then it must be true that their coordinate measures, which are the, when you lay it out and you put the protractor on it, the degree measure where OA lands, OA lands at uh, A degrees and then B degrees and C degrees. So that means if we have betweenness of rays, those things are emanating from the same center and B is between A and C, then A is less than B is less than C or A has got to be greater than B and greater than C. What con two conditional statements does this definition imply? Remember that if and only if? I'll let you try and sort it out on your own there. Um, theorem two looks very much like the betweenness of points theorem. And remember the definitions just say that you have things in order. And the, uh, th the theorems say that if you have betweenness, then you can add the parts up to make the whole. So if you have betweenness of rays, then the two angles add up to make the big angle. The two smaller angles add up to make the larger angle. Now, one more time. Betweenness definitions accomplish coordinate layout. In other words, go from large to small or small to large. The betweenness theorems accomplish that the smaller parts add up to the larger whole. As you're writing your proofs, uh, make sure that you distinguish between what you need and if you just need to say that this one's greater than that one, then you're probably going to use the definition. If you're going to say that the two parts add up to the whole or this, these two pieces add up to that, then your reason might be a betweenness theorem.